Shalom Chavirim! I'm Rafi. I'm Daniela. And you are watching or listening to B'nai Kiva's brand new podcast, Past and Present. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify and Facebook. Where we'll be interviewing Chavirim of B'nai Kiva of the past and present to share with you some exciting insights into their lives. Shalom Chavirim, welcome back to our next episode of Past and Present Podcast. We are so, so lucky, firstly, to be joined by Rafi in person. Yeah. Crazy times. And secondly, we have a very special guest today, our incredible Norman Shlichim, Matan Nini and Tome. Hello. Woo-hoo. Thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing Hello. this morning? Baruch Hashem, we're so excited to be here. Oh. We're excited to have you. Yeah, we're really excited to have you. Without any further ado, let's go straight into things. Chit chat, chit chat, even. And we want to start off with asking you to introduce yourselves, a bit oh, about a your background, who you are, what you do, what you did before coming to England, what you've been doing in England. The floor is yours. Thank you. So we're Matan and Nini with the Northern Shlichim. Uh, my parents do Shacha, who's five to five and a half, Ma'or, she's three and a half, and Tomer, who is three months old. Um, the Mancunian yeah. one. The, this is our Mancunian baby, yeah. <laughs> he already has the accent when he cries. Um, and yeah, we're here in the last almost two years, going back to Israel in the summer, Bezrat Hashem. And uh, do you want to tell what you did in Israel, maybe? I think we came from Alon in Gush Zion. I was born in Alon Shul, my parents still live in there, and Nini, she's from uh, Jerusalem. Uh, before we came, I, I'm a teacher in Israel. I used to teach in a high school for girls. It's called uh, Ulpen at Rosh Tzurim. Uh, for a few years, it was a very good uh, experience. And beside this, I also taught or was working in a different yeshiva in special program. It's called Yedidim. That this program is working on a personal connection with our students. So I took students out from the lesson and make with them a personal conversation and try to uh, help them to build their abilities and their skill for life and about their identity. And it was really, really good and nice experience uh, in this educational uh, things or informal things. And Nini, she came from the nurses area. Yeah, I worked in, uh, in Adassa and Karen as a nurse in bone marrow transplants. Very different from the Shlichut world, but Shlichut in a different aspect of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and Tomer, what did you do before coming to England? He was very enjoying up in the sky with Hashem, uh, waiting to come to our family. Um, what was your involvement with B'nai Akiva before you came here, if, if at all? Yeah, it is. Um, I grew up in BA, in Alon Shvut. Uh, I was Chanich yeah. and Madrich in two different uh, Svivot. I started to be a Madrich in year nine, in year 10, um, in different Sviva, or Frying Sviva, it's called Yishi. Yishi, it's next to Bet Shemesh. It's a um, Yishuv of Yemen. All the people there are Yemen, and there I learned how to eat uh, harif and schug and uh, helbe and everything, and to speak with my hat and gmail, uh, as you know, as the Yemen people uh, speaking. It was really nice experience, and I loved them so much. And then I moved back to Alon Shvut, and I was a madrich in Alon Shvut there for more two years uh, for Shevet Vir. Who is Shevet Vir? What Shevet are you? I'm Shevet Vir. Who's there, Shevet Vir? <laughs> And, and then I was involved in the machanoe, machanot and everything the summer during the year. Um, and I didn't go to BA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Amaza? Yeah, I know. Um, and it, it, how does camp in Israel, in an Akiva camp, compare to our machanots? They're, they're quite different, aren't they? It is. It is different. First of all, how many days it's taking that in Israel, when you are a young Hanich, it's for two days, maybe three days, and that's it. 
only when you are in year eight or nine, you're going for a week. Six day on Machane included Shabbat. This is a highlight. The highlight <laughs> called Machane Shmeyarim. Um, but in the Machane in Israel, we more uh, walking, hiking, and uh, see Eretz Israel and feeling Eretz Israel and uh, cooking in the. The conditions are less good. Less, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely less. Yeah, it's less activities that we have here in the uh, UK, um, and more walking and feeling Eretz Israel sleeping outside in Sakshena, uh, in tents. It's really, really nice. I like it. So now we are going to move on to discussing the Shlichot. So would you be able to tell us a little bit of how you came to do Shlichot in the first place? And I know you can speak about this for a very long time, but describe what your experience has been like on Shlichot here in the UK? My first experience in Shlichut was when I was four years old. <laughs> it started in Russia, in Moscow. My parents did Shlichut. Wow. I, it was only me and my sister. Uh, I, wa I celebrate uh, birthday four. I remember this birthday. And it was Matanchu Katanchu. Yeah, this was my <laughs> nickname. Mat Matanchi Katanchi. <laughs> this one there. there. It's a small Matan. Uh, grew. grew yeah. up a bit. <laughs> so we lived in Moscow for a year, a year plus, and few months. And I remember a few words. Also, I remember the song of my school that we were there. It's called the Etz Chaim, this school. And then the atmosphere of Shlichut, of the dialogue about Shlichut, it's part of my, uh, my family in Israel. My parents still in connect with, connection with the uh, um, with their students from Russia, and they coming to my parents' house and for Shabbat and for things. It's a thing in my house that I grew up. Yeah, and in my family, uh, my, my, my mom uh, made Aliyah from Belgium. So uh, we always grew up on the thing of like Aliyah. Honestly, it was not very easy for her, but she always say, Tachles, this is the place for Jewish people to be. I mean, they did suffer from anti-Semitism in, uh, in uh, Belgium, even though they did have a good life, but in the end of the day, it wasn't the right place for them to be. Um, yeah. So they made Aliyah. And, uh, and when I did national service for my second year, I did Shlichut in Florida, which is basically the opposite of Manchester. <laughs> 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 in but, uh, um, I did that year, and it really, it was a very um, challenging and yet meaningful, and, and I can basically say my life can speak before and after that year, um, because it's just learning so much about our siblings abroad, um, so it's, a, it's a very, it's meant a lot. And then when I came back from this Lichot, I met Matan. A few weeks later. Mama, a few weeks, he caught me quickly. And, uh, and on the first phone call, he heard that I just came back and, 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 and he was like, oh, it's a shame. I always wanted to do Shlichud and probably now you came back and you don't want to do it anymore. And, and didn't say no. I said, let's recover <laughs> and we'll talk <laughs> in a few years. Um, so in some point we did want to do this uh, extra thing to experience it, to, to live this part as well with our life. Um, so we decided to try, so we signed up program it's called the uh, Amiel Strauss oh, Amiel and they actually do some kind of like um, uh, preparation Achana. Achana, yeah for for two years just to learn about communities and to learn about like different um, things you can do and how to treat it and you know all these things um, and we started to to look for a place to go and actually we almost signed up into other places <laughs> Um, we almost signed up in Canada and in Connecticut. Oh, yes, and Excellent. that's very different. Oh. Yeah, then he said, Let's look for the opposite of Florida, something cold. <laughs> no, I did love Florida, I love the sun. Um, but uh, yeah, and it just happened for technical reasons, it didn't work out in the end. And the week those two options went off the table. Um, then Kiva called and asked if we want to check Manchester. 
So this is how we came here, basically. Um, and obviously, like the entire world, um, no one ever thought this two years is gonna look like that. <laughs> this is not what we signed up for whatsoever. But we do feel like when we went through this whole process of finding a place for Shlichut, we really felt this siyata dishmaya that Hashem is really like leading us to the right path because it seems like it's going to one way very clearly and then it just turned for right a very path. different thing. The right for us, obviously, yeah. And, and, um, and we just assume that also this is the reason it's happened at that time to come here during Corona <laughs> to have this experience. Um, so that's basically it if we talk about how we got here. <laughs> um, did you have any particular hopes and fears coming in? And two years later, how do you reflect on those? We had plenty <laughs> of worries before we came. Obviously the first one is the language. It's not a first language. Um, and in Israel, when you learn English in high school, you learn American English, English, English. So it's making some embarrassing situations. Yeah, there's some awkward moments, <laughs> indeed. Uh, but also, you know, living our families, even our friends, um, our comfort zone in any, in every way. And um, hope it will be good for the kids. Yeah, and we had good jobs. It wasn't like, you know, we're looking to find ourselves and we don't want it to do, so we go to somewhere else. We had great jobs. We had great place to live. We had great community. Um, so it's scary. It's scary to kind of take a bet, in a way, on your life. Um, and the sun is very missing. <laughs> so that was also well, something. Over the past few days, I don't know what's been in Manchester. I know in London, it's been very, very warm. Making it's up beautiful. for the air. So here now, actually last week was gorgeous. Now it's like less layers of clouds. Let's say like this. It's like less. But it's nice for, you know, English weather. <laughs> and how have you found the community in Manchester? And, and just like, how has it been to be on Shekhar? Obviously, like you said, it's not what you expected or signed up for. Um, but I guess you can also tell us a bit about what it was like to do Shekha until Corona hit and also since, how have you managed? What's it been like for you? Wow, well, it's a great question because Tachles, I'll be honest with you, when people talk about Manchester in the Shlichot world, it's basically the weather is horrible. <laughs> it's like, the, the summer is like the days are so long and Shabbos is last forever. But, but the community is amazing. And this is true. The and community, it's true. The community here is the most important thing. Yeah. The people here are so lovely and so warm. Oh, and my, my, my. They made us to feel as part of the family in a second after we arrived. Oh, it was so, so nice. And even today, and it was, it makes sense, it was difficult in the uh, COVID uh, time and on the lockdown. And, you can't feel the community as you felt before. Yeah, basically they stay calm for the community and they do not have a community for a year. <laughs> it's like, you know, more details. But they are amazing people. So Baruch Hashem in the, last, in the first six months, it was, well, overwhelming, I would say, the first word to describe it in many ways. It's to learn a completely different culture, completely different things. There's no way to compare really BA here to BA in Israel. And you, Rafi, was here to help us. Baruch Hashem Rafi was here, 100%. Um, and it was just um, it, it was just a lot to, to learn. And when we finally started, like, okay, we're starting to understand what's going on. Um, we just, we had Corona starting. <laughs> so. We just finished the whole Shabbat Yilgun in each in all the in communities, the it was just really like amazing highlights of the year. And mm -hmm. then uh, it just stopped in like three days. And for, for you, nobody really thought it's going to be for so long. So the main reason we came for was for the community, which is still a good reason. I mean, from the first visit we came, before we even signed up um, the contract actually to come here, we came to visit and we fell in love with the people and, and we still love them, <laughs> obviously. Um, so yeah, for sure, the first six months were crazy. 
Um, yeah, so you said about the community and how warm and welcoming they've been, which like I've also seen firsthand, which is amazing. But in general, how have you found like British culture and, and how, <laughs> how has that differed from, you know, what you're used to in Israel? And, and are there good things about it? Are there criticisms that you have or, or things that, you know, you wish weren't the way that they are? Good question. It is different indeed, for sure. And we love to learn about more cultures and feel them. Uh, it's really, really nice. I think yeah. the best thing, I really love Harry Potter. Oh, I love that everybody sounds like this and it looks like this. And it's like, Mamash, it's <laughs> just but we don't all have the ones. That's the only thing that it's not, but everything That's like awesome. it, it's you know, when you when you read it in Israel, it's like, oh my god, how did you create all this world? And now it's like, okay, this is the world and you just make like magical twists. Just look out of, <laughs> out of the window. So this is very exciting for me at least. I'm really enjoying it. But there are some things that it just and the accent. The accent. The accent. As the you can tell. British accent. Yeah. We, we see mean, how we, we be more specific. The Manchester accent in particular. Oh, of course. Can I say that when we came, we didn't understand any of the accents? <laughs> no. Now we can be like, okay, this we know more, this we know less, but the slang and everything we're still learning. But there are a few things we, we just don't understand the point. Like tea with milk makes no sense. But you like it, so we're not judging you. But <laughs> we won't okay. take it personally. We just we just need to be aware that when you are asking cup of tea or say someone asking you, milk. yeah, you need to say without milk. After speaking you, of which, yeah, you can't see it because of the camera, but ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is milk in here. There you go. So after a few accidents, we understood that we need to say it without, without milk. milk. Yeah. And also, you know, in the sink, yeah, you have two tap, taps. Yeah. In the so toilet. They have freezing cold or boiling hot. And you can't, it's not yeah. working. It's not working. We don't understand it. They can't, not coming from the same way. It makes no sense. We're sorry. You should. <laughs> <laughs> and even if you have one that is combined, it's like half freezing cold, half boiling hot. It's not like normal sure. anyway this is something that we still don't understand we must say and also with the plugs this is with <laughs> electricity this is with yes no no it makes sense it makes sense but that you have bottom in the electricity make it work wall. or not right in the wall mm -hmm. how many times we thought that all the thing got like ruined and we just figured that we just need to switch it on it's not funny <laughs> <laughs> it took us a long time <laughs> to understand that. So there's lots of things that we just didn't understand. We didn't know how to check if a pineapple is good or not. There's just loads of things. You don't even know what to buy or the chulen packs that we didn't understand. So there are quite a few things that you have that we don't understand. Some of them are good. Don't shed a tear, but this question uh, might make you a bit emotional. If not, then don't worry. Um, what are you going to miss? about yeah. Egypt or Easy. England? The people. 100%. Absolutely the people. No need to think about that. The friendships that we had here, the conversation, the chat, the cup of tea. With without milk. milk. Without. <laughs> yeah. uh, we love the people here. We really, really feeling part and enjoy uh, to be with them, with you. And... I think it's part of the good reasons that Corona made, uh, uh, part of the good things that Corona did was to switch everything to online. And then we got much more connection with people from in London, in Israel, but we, you know, that we, we wouldn't otherwise will actually have the opportunity to talk to as much. And, and most of what we did was actually, you know, during COVID was to be with the Bugrim online. In, uh, in play in the, in things we can't really achieve otherwise or different communities in, in other places that you know we can just pop in for that Africa but back for a talk for activity and and it was just um 
it made the connection um, stronger in a way, even though we would think otherwise with Corona. I will miss the uh, Mishma. The Mishma, yeah. The Mishma, to sit together, to sing, or the uh, Tish to two. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, it was so nice to find people that just enjoy to sit and sing, or to find a way to their soul. Uh, and to the Kadosh Baruch Hu, the connection to Hashem, it's so nice and so impressive in two different ways, in the same way. Uh, I will miss it, Mamash. Yeah, the people. Well, speaking yeah. of Mishma, and um, I know that you guys love to incorporate music into our programming, and it's something that we love as well. Special to the the Purim songs of Lech Dodi. Unbelievable. Guys, go check it out if you haven't seen it already. It's on Matan and in his YouTube channel. <laughs> and um, yeah, how has, is music part of your religious identity, a way for you to express your Judaism? To Judaism. You know, when we, you talked about Parashat Chukat, yeah. let's talk about Parashat Shlach two weeks ago. When the Meraglim came from from the, the spices came from ah. Israel, from the mission. There is the pasuk they said, Moshe told them, zimrat ha'aretz." And the parshanim explained, "Mizimrat, it could be uh, from the fruit or something that you find in Israel." Or one of the explanations said, "Mizimrat, it sounds zimra. It's like a song. It's like a nigun. Take someone, something from the nigun, from the atmosphere and the soul of Eretz Israel." Um, I really think that there is something uh, special in the Judaism that makes a connection between nigun and soul and Akadosh Baruch Hu and Avodat Hashem and the people um, and everything coming together, combined together to, to our life. And this is, if you're talking about Torah Chaim, this is a nigun Chaim, nigun for life. Or, um, this is something that we try to keep here before we get married, after we get married, and uh, with the kids, different songs and songs that are nigun, that they have meaningful to different situations. And you can feel when it's a nigun that's coming from the soul or coming in the soul, into the soul, and find it there. And uh, way over the way over the Abu Hashem, this is what I think. Yeah. And if I can add, even though it was perfect, I have nothing to add. But just a bit that um, for, for my perspective, you know, the Torah is Torah Chaim. I mean, I don't see my Judaism as something different from myself. And I'm a, I'm a Jewish woman, obviously. It's part of my life. Um, I'm not necessarily doing the, making the difference. And, and I feel music in general is just something that gives you a way to sometimes um, express what you feel without even you actually like know how to set yourself and especially I must say during this last year we've been crazy to everyone and sometimes you're just so it was so hard sometimes and and there are the songs that can express it <laughs> and and other people wrote these words on their um, tunes that uh, that really help to to kind of like um process what we are going through and if it's songs and it's not necessarily like codice songs it can be obviously things from the torah and and, and you know torah is, is quite clever <laughs> and it's always like it gives this uh, support but also different songs um they just help to to express who we are and then it's something that it's um it's international i mean people people experience it in every way and also if you speak about the difference between like judaism and, and the people themselves i think it also goes with judaism and being an israeli or or the states of israel let's say because when you learn about culture you learn a lot through the food and through the songs now through the food we're not that great but through the songs <laughs> we can do more so um if I think that if you really want to connect to someone to something, so you learn the music of it, and it just you learn what they talk about through their music, and what keeps them busy. And in the last year, you know, the top um, rated songs in Israel, the first sentence was uh, you lighting the Shabbos candles, and it's not something something religious at all. 
it just talks about you know the simple things in life and how much we should appreciate it and all those stuff so when we come and as Shlichim want to represent Israel and represent Judaism together songs are a very easy way to show um Israel Achles. beautiful I mean you said that you couldn't add but you very much complimented the beautiful words which uh Matan I uh, gave and we're at the end of the podcast no. but there's one final question which we'd like both of you to add, answer which is please or if you have can you share a closing message some words for our cover in near Cuba and if you have something particular you'd like to share with the northern Haverim who you've had the zuchot to have uh, um, spent more more time with them specifically. I think first of all, to be proud of who you are, to know who you are, and to be proud of this. That to know that we are Jewish, we are proud of the specialist uh, culture in the world. Uh, to be proud of who, who you are, about our family, about my abilities and my skills, and to know that you, we, everyone, we are able to do everything, everything that he wants, and if he wishes, so we can do it. This is something very, very important in life here in England, in Britain, but also um, in Israel, or if you have any dream to go to Israel to achieve any achievements, so this is part of this. And before we let Nini, Nini to answer this, I want, would love to add that one more message is that we would love to see you every time that you are coming to Israel, to have you. We have an extra room in our, in our house in Israel, in Yerucham. So, uh, one feel... bus from Jerusalem, straight to our house. Yes. So, I'll see you there. So yeah. we, just want, <laughs> we just want you uh, to feel that you have family in Israel. I know that many people here have some families and people that they know, but for everyone here in the north or even in London, etc., you have family and feel comfortable to call us, to send us a message. If we didn't talk even for a few months or years, we are here and we are, would love to see you and have you. I agree. <laughs> um, so I think that, first of all, we, we love you, really we do and it's something that it's not it can't be taken for granted after you know not seeing people and everybody having such um you know it was it was intense those two years for everyone um and uh and we're happy that we're sad to go because <laughs> if, if, if we were just too happy to go away it was quite setting <laughs> um and i think that the only thing that i want to say to to all our friends and, and you know the people we know and we haven't met yet is you know if we talked about songs before there's a song Simu Level and Neshama of Hanan Benari and he talks about Tachlis notice your Neshama notice your your heart and who you are because from what we saw with many people here they don't see how beautiful they are really and how clever they are and how much they can they're deep people and and especially I know it's like it's teenage life and this is how it is and you always want to be like more cool and be with your friends but they are amazing 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 people and and don't try to hide it and don't try to push it away I mean give your heart the place to be you know everything you can be because because you are amazing <laughs> and and we we learn so much from each and every person we met here and uh, and we will miss you very, very much. So don't give up on yourself and in love. I, I know it's like peace and love, but it is love yourself because you are amazing. <laughs> and uh, and that's it. We just, we will miss you. And you'll, okay, we won't have to miss you because you will come to us, but we love we you. We'll miss you too until we come. Um, and those are really powerful messages. Thank you so much for joining us. And also on behalf of Bnei Akiva UK, thank you so incredibly much for being such incredible shlichim this year. It's not been easy in a normal year, let alone um, these last two years, and you've really risen to the challenge. 
and provided some incredible support and programming to the community. So really thank you so, so much. And thank you for joining us this morning and giving us some time, especially with the newborn. Oh, thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank you very much. Bye. And we have the best souvenir from England. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll always remember. <laughs> Yeah. Love you. And remember, don't have sick last year. Don't stop to sing. Don't stop to develop. Don't have sick last year. Actions. Law. Not sick last year. Oh, square. Thank you so much. It's not a goodbye. It's a see you later. The hip drop. Bye bye. Bye bye.